All right, great. Uh, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to our Dreamforce session on integrating external services with Chatter. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for being here this morning. It's pretty early, 8 a.m. Is, is not an easy task, so we really appreciate it. Um, first off, let's start with some introductions. My name is Jaime Solari. I'm Alejandro Orne. And I am Dagoberto Suarez. And we work at Octana, a professional services organization focused on Salesforce. So the Salesforce products we're going to be covering today are Chatter, uh, Salesforce, specifically Force.com, and Talk. Talk is a product we developed, and it's basically a Chatter uh, client. Um, that is uh, available for download on the App Exchange. So that's a shameless plug there. Um, so let's start by setting uh, ourselves some goals for this session. And it's, uh, the goal is basically to improve the uh, experience with Salesforce Chatter by using GIFs, emojis, reactions, natural language. And, um, and in that sense, we hope to make uh, the Office Chat experience a little bit more more enjoyable and, and entertaining. So here's a screenshot of what the current Chatter UI looks like. And here's a screenshot of what uh, our Salesforce uh, Chatter UI looks like. By the way, this Chatter client is available on the App Exchange. And uh, you can use it with a web browser client. Or you can also use native clients on iOS and Android. So you can get those on Google Play and on App Store. So in, third, uh, in, in terms of third-party external services, we're going to be covering uh, Giphy.com for animated uh, GIFs. We're going to be covering Bravey for natural language processing. And we're going to be covering OneSignal for uh, push notification systems. So the first external service we're going to be covering is Giphy.com. Um, Giphy.com is a GIF library uh, that can be leveraged within conversations. And, um, and it's a pretty extensive library. And it's very easy for a developer to, um, to integrate this within their conversation applications. And as you can see from the screenshot here, uh, the user experience is very simple. It's just forward slash Giphy and the name of the image you want to invoke. And uh, the previous slide was, uh, was an image of, of talk. And this is an image of what the same command looks like in, in regular chatter. And so now we're going to go uh, uh, over a, a quick demo on what the Giphy, uh, Giphy invocation looks like. Uh, well, uh, this is the UI. Uh, first, as we mentioned, we're going to integrate Giphy.com external service into our chart client, talk. Uh, to invoke this service, we're going to type forward slide Giphy plus the word we wanted to look for, in this case, Dreamforce. Uh, as you can see, when I share this post, if the internet works, um, I get the animated Giphy's. We can use uh, Giphy's on post comment on um, personal conversations. Here is what it looks like in personal conversations. Uh, now, Dauberto will explain how, <laughs> how is the implementation code. OK. Well, that's a great GIF. Well, to post a feed, we create a, to post a feed with a GIF, we create a variable with the Giphy API endpoint plus the Giphy key and the text we want to search. Next, we execute the request. And with the result, we create an object where we save the address of the GIF. This object is added into an array where we have all the values of the feed stored. And finally, we post the feed uh, with the address of the animated image as a link. Great. So. Um, so that was basically Giphy. You can go to developers.giphy.com to find uh, all the information on their APIs and how to integrate it with your applications. So the second um, external service that we're going to cover is Bravey. So Bravey is a natural language uh, JavaScript API. 
and um, we're going to be we're going to be using it in conjunction with JS Force. <laughs> JS Force is a, another JavaScript API uh, that interacts with Salesforce uh, APIs as a single point of point of contact. Um, so uh, our talk bot, uh, basically enables you to read and write to Salesforce objects, um, be able to perform queries on standard objects like accounts, cases, campaigns, opportunities, as well as any custom object that you might have in your org. And uh, here are some examples of what these uh, interactions might look like. You can ask things like, uh, I need to get all cases. Uh, I need to list all the opportunities over a certain amount of dollar amount. Or I need to create a poll. So here's, um, here's a UI screenshot of, of the bot. And in here, in this example, we're listing all the opportunities over uh, 800,000. And we get a, a couple of results back. So now we'll see it in action. Well, um, this is the UI of the bot within our chat client, Talk, which we call TalkBot. First, I'm going to show you how to list standard object. Uh, this is just typing like list. I'm going to use add to get the help. Uh, it's going to be like contact, just to get a list of the contacts of the org. Uh, we can use it for cases, if I don't miss it. Uh, we are also able to look for a specific object using natural language. This will be typing something like get opportunities with amount below 40,000. If I don't miss it. Forty thousand. Yeah. We're running out of business, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're gonna go broke pretty soon. We are also able to look for list views. This is just type in list views. We get a list of the list views that we have associated in the org. We can see all of them are clickable. If I click on one of those, we can access to their details. Um, we are also have more details just over here. Now, Dagoberto will dive into this. Well, our bot uses Rebus, uh, you know, for natural language processing, or NLP for short. There are two types of NLP objects. Fuzzy and sequential, both types are trained by samples. Fuzzy doesn't follow in order to identify the values in the sentence and doesn't need to find all the values in the sentence. And the other way, sequential is treated follows in order to identify the values uh, in the training and all the values have to be defined. In this case, we are going to use the, the fuzzy type. To identify values in the sentence, we create entities. In this case, we are going to use a string entity recognizer to recognize or find uh, the custom and standard object names uh, in a sentence by inserting for each object a list of synonyms we want to, to recognize. In this case, we are going to use the label, the name, and the plural label and add them to the NLP object. There are other types of uh, of entity recognizers in RevAS, such as a date entity recognizer, an email entity recognizer, and a number entity recognizer. Next, we train the, uh, the NLP object by adding a document. What is a document? A document is a simple sentence where we define the entities we want to recognize and its order. In this case, we want to recognize an action, uh, a quantity, and the object. This uh, sentence is also related to a name of the intent of the sample. Then when the user uh, sends a, a text, the NLP object uh, tests the message and calls a method with a result to post a message with the information the user asks. This method uh, executes uh, an action depending on what the NLP uh, object recognizes in the, the, in the intent along 
with the entities, the values of the entities they found. And finally, post the message, the message with the result. Great. So the third and final external service that we're going to be covering is uh, how push notifications are implemented, which is using one signal. So one signal is, is used in order to notify you if you get a new message, if you are mentioned by someone else, or uh, you're added to a group, for example. And um, here, now we're going to go a little bit over how this was implemented. Well, in this case, to send a push notification to one signal, we create a and post request with the one signal API endpoint plus our IP key. Uh, next, we create an object with the message, the title, the ID of the application we have in one signal, the optional data, data that we want to send, and a list of users who will receive the push notification. This object is realized into JSON, set the body request with it, and finally send the push notification to one signal. Cool. So, so now we're going to go over a couple of internal services that are also integrated into Chatter. And um, the first one is uh, our SQL queries, and the other one is uh, reactions. So SQL queries are basically uh, custom uh, SQL queries that are stored in, a, in an object. And uh, it's basically a pairing between the invocation and the query itself. So in this example that we see here on the screen, it's you know, the invocation would be what birthdays are coming up this month, and that in turn would, would trigger the execution of the query, select name, birthday, from context, uh, equal to this month. And um, here's a screenshot of what that uh, invocation looks like. And on the right hand, on the right -hand side, you have what the custom object uh, deployed here would look like as well. And here's a quick demo on how that works. Um, all right, this is the bot. Uh here we have a list of, of the demo of the service that we have. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in into Salesforce. Here we have a list of the service, like we actually made it. Uh, I'm going to set up a quick text, links, and queries. We have three different kinds of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a quick text. Uh, the answer will be what's going on today. And the answer will be Dreamfest. I'm going to save it, and I'm just going to reload it, the bot from here. And uh, what we have over here is just go to talk. And as we can see, we got a service right here. When I just ask what's going on tonight, the talk will answer Dreamfest. Now that Roberto will explain the implementation code. Well, <coughs> sorry. In this case, we are going first uh, to create a, a JSForce connection with the URL, the access token, and the Salesforce API version that we want to use. Then we execute the query that we have stored in the custom object that we have and post a, a message with a result. If there is no result, we notify the user that there is no result. That's it. Great. And the final uh, service that we're going to be integrating to today is um, our reactions. So reactions are, are basically uh, stored in custom objects as well. And then they're associated with feeds and private conversations, and then surfaced in the UI through, uh, through Unicode. So next up, we're going to show some details on how, on how this is implemented. Well, to react for reactions, we create a, a, another custom object uh, where we save the ID of the feed, the Unicode of the emoji, and the user ID who, who will react uh, in this case. In this uh, snippet code, we show you how we uh, uh, get all the, the reaction of a list of feed that we send and re return the, the records. With this record, we process it and finally obtaining uh, for each feed a list of reaction and the users who reacted. Great. So uh, that's basically it. Um, we hope that we were able to give you some ideas on how you can adopt uh, some strategies to spice up your chatter org. Um, Giphy's emojis, reactions are some of them, but there are many more. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. And I hope you can take advantage of talk 
our Chatter client, uh, which is available to make your office uh, experience in chat more enjoyable. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, if you have any questions or any comments, uh, now is the time. <laughs> no questions? That's it? That's it? Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks.